Who knows for certain? Who shall here declare it? Whence was it born? Whence came creation? The gods are later than this world's formation. Who then can know the origins of the world? None knows whence creation arose, or whether he has or has not made it, he who surveys it from the lofty skies. Only he knows, or perhaps he knows not. These words are 3,500 years old. They're taken from the Rig Veda, a collection of early Sanskrit hymns. The most sophisticated ancient cosmological ideas came from Asia and particularly from India. Here, there's a tradition of skeptical questioning and unselfconscious humility before the great cosmic mysteries. Amidst the routine of daily life, in say the harvesting and winnowing of grain, people all over the world have wondered, where did the universe come from? Asking this question is a hallmark of our species. There's a natural tendency to understand the origin of the cosmos in familiar biological terms, the mating of cosmic deities or the hatching of a cosmic egg or maybe the intonation of some magic phrase. The Big Bang is our modern scientific creation myth. It comes from the same human need to solve the cosmological riddle. Most cultures imagined the world to be only a few hundred human generations old. Hardly anyone guessed that the cosmos might be far older, but the ancient Hindus did. They, like every other society, noted and calibrated the cycles in nature. The rising and setting of the sun and stars, the phases of the moon, the passing of the seasons. The Pungal Festival is the rejoicing in the fact that there are cycles in nature. But how could such cycles come about unless the gods will them? And if there are cycles in the years of humans, might there not be cycles in the eons of the gods? The Hindu religion is the only one of the world's great faiths dedicated to the idea that the cosmos itself undergoes an immense, indeed an infinite, number of deaths and rebirths. It is the only religion in which the time scales correspond, no doubt by accident, to those of modern scientific cosmology. Its cycles run from our ordinary day and night to a day and night of Brahma, 8.64 billion years long, longer than the age of the Earth or the Sun, and about half the time since the Big Bang. And there are much longer time scales still. There is the deep and appealing notion that the universe is but the dream of the God, who, after a hundred Brahma years, dissolves himself into a dreamless sleep, and the universe dissolves with him, until, after another Brahma century, he stirs, recomposes himself, and begins again to dream the great cosmic lotus dream. Meanwhile, elsewhere, there are an infinite number of other universes, each with its own god, dreaming the cosmic dream. These great ideas are tempered by another, perhaps still greater. It is said that men may not be the dreams of the gods, but rather that the gods 
are the dreams of men. In India, there are many gods, and each god has many manifestations. These Chola bronzes cast in the 11th century include several different incarnations of the god Shiva, seen here at his wedding. The most elegant and sublime of these bronzes is a representation of the creation of the universe at the beginning of each cosmic cycle, a motif known as the cosmic dance of Shiva. The god has four hands. In the upper right hand is a drum whose sound is the sound of creation. In the upper left hand is a tongue of flame, a reminder that the universe now newly created will billions of years from now be utterly destroyed. Creation, destruction. These profound and lovely ideas are central to ancient Hindu beliefs as exemplified in this Chola temple at Daras Asuram. They are a kind of premonition of modern astronomical ideas. Without doubt, the universe has been expanding since the Big Bang, but it is by no means clear that it will continue to expand forever. If there is less than a certain amount of matter in the universe, then the mutual gravitation of the receding galaxies will be insufficient to stop the expansion and the universe will run away forever. But if there is more matter than we can see, hidden away in black holes, say, or in hot but invisible gas between the galaxies, then the universe holds together and partakes of a very Indian succession of cycles, expansion followed by contraction, cosmos upon cosmos, universes without end. If we live in such an oscillating universe, then the Big Bang is not the creation of the cosmos, but merely the end of the previous cycle, the destruction of the last incarnation of the cosmos. Neither of these modern cosmologies may be altogether to our liking. In one cosmology, the universe is created somehow, from nothing 15 to 20 billion years ago and expands forever. The galaxies mutually receding until the last one disappears over our cosmic horizon. Then the galactic astronomers are out of business. The stars cool and die. Matter itself decays and the universe becomes a thin, cold haze of elementary particles. In the other, the oscillating universe, the cosmos has no beginning and no end. And we are in the midst of an infinite cycle of cosmic deaths and rebirths, with no information trickling through the cusps of the oscillation. Nothing of the galaxies, stars, planets, life forms, civilizations evolved in the previous incarnation of the universe trickles through the cusp flitters past the Big Bang to be known in our universe.